Number one says that Lynn is using the diagram to prove the statement. If a parallelogram has one right angle, then it's a right or then it's a rectangle. So given that EFGH is a parallelogram, okay, so we know that it's a parallelogram and that angle HEF is a right angle, which reasoning about angles will help her prove that FGH um, so this one here, so FGH is a right angle. So A says corresponding angles are congruent when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, which is definitely a true statement. So if we have parallel lines, the corresponding angles are congruent, but these two angles in question are not corresponding angles. So this is not what's gonna be helpful. Opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So we do definitely have a parallelogram, okay? We know this one's a right angle, and then this is the one across from it. And in, in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent, and so that one would be good. Vertical angles are congruent, again, is a true statement, just we don't have vertical angles here. Vertical angles are right next to each other, uh, or sorry, right across from each other like this. So that doesn't work. And then base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent is a true statement, but not what we have in this um, diagram. All right, number two says A, B, D, E is an isosceles trapezoid. Select all pairs of congruent triangles. So letter A says a tri um, triangle A, B, E. So A, B, E. And let's just mark up what we have here as we draw the triangle. So we know this angle, we know this side, and then this is kind of cut, so we won't mark anything there. Is congruent to triangle um, DBE. And so we've got this angle, and we've got this side, and then they share this side. Now, the way that they did this, they have angle A first and angle D first. Well, angle D and angle A are not the same size angles, so these two triangles are not congruent. Letter B says um, triangle A, B, D. Um, is that one congruent to D, A, E? And so this one, again, they marked up this little angle A um, with this angle D, which has a potential to be the same. So let's look at some of the other stuff. Um, B with um, this B angle here with A here, and those are not the same. So this is not true. And you could also look at D with E um, not being the same, and they don't have the same side lengths either. So if we like kind of pulled this off, you could see these, that they don't have the same kind of angles marked there. They do have the same side. They shared this side, right? So we've got two sides and an angle, and this is two sides and a different angle. So they don't have the same um, congruent angle marked, so that's not going to prove that they're congruent either. Triangle ABE. congruent to triangle BAD. So we've got this angle in the purple one and then that side. So let's pull these two off and take a look at them. And they also shared a side, so they shared this side in both. So we've got this side um, congruent to this side. So now we see on these two pictures that we've got two sets of sides and the angle between them marked as congruent, and that is side angle side. So these two triangles are congruent. D has us looking at triangle AED, and then triangle BDE. And now these share this um, bottom side. So let me mark that when we pull it down. And then let's mark it on this one now that we know that it was shared. Okay. 
Um, so again, we've got um, two sides and the angle between them marked as congruent. So these two triangles are congruent by side angle side. Then let's just make sure that they um, follow the correct order um, in the way that they marked them. So we had A, E, D. And then this was um, E, B, D. So let's set them, um, let's see what order we went. So we went A, E, D. So we went down the one tick mark to the two tick mark. Then this one was B, D, E, same order. So these two triangles are congruent. Then E has us looking at triangle E, A, B, and then also E, D, B. And we can see that those are not going to be congruent. They've got a different angle with the side. Um, so this one has the one tick mark angle and this one had the two tick mark angle. Um, and then they're also just sharing two, two congruent sides and the angle not between, even though the angle isn't congruent anyway. So this one would be false. Number three, match the conjecture with a rephase, rephrased statement of proof. So we're looking at restating this conjecture in what we would need to be proving. So A says the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So we're going to be looking at um, having talked about a parallelogram first and then proving that these little segments here are congruent since that's what bisect means. So bisect would mean that we would have this segment congruent to this one and this one congruent to this one. So let's look for in a parallelogram. So we're looking at number two and number four. And then we wanna be seeing where we're talking about um, the diagonal segments. So in number two, it talks about GH being congruent to um, EFE. So those are not the diagonals, those are opposite sides. So let's look at the next one. So number four talks about EK being congruent to KG. So that is the diagonal pieces and then FK congruent to kh so we would rewrite whoops we would rewrite this one um like number four so then now that we've looked at this one says parallelogram let's look at another one that says parallelogram which is b and this one does talk about the opposite sides so that would be said for this one that in parallelogram efgh gh is congruent to fe and eh is congruent to fg so naming those opposite sides so that's number two then we can look at um, these next ones talk about being a quadrilateral with opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram so quadrilateral they're going to talk about the opposite sides and then conclude that it's a parallelogram and so we know that we're looking in number one or number three, where they talk about the opposite sides first. So in quadrilateral EFGH, GH is congruent to FE. So those are this one is talking about opposite sides. So they're saying this is congruent to this, and EH is congruent to um, FG. Then it's a parallelogram. Then we'll show that it's a parallelogram. So C is going with statement number one. So that leaves number three to go with D, which does talk about a quadrilateral with the diagonal pieces congruent and then concluding it's a parallelogram. Number four, which of the following criteria always proves that triangles are congruent? Select all that apply. So if we have corresponding um, congruent angles with a side in between, that would be true. Okay, we learned that you can have two angles in the included side. This next one says that we have two sides and the included angle. We know that that is true. Corresponding um, congruent where we have two sides and the non-included angle. This one is false. This is that ambiguous case where there could be two triangles made with that same information. Three sets of congruent sides. Definitely true. If we know two sides are two sets of sides are congruent, that is not enough. 
Um, and if we know three angles are congruent, that is not enough. So remember, we could just kind of look at this triangle and it's kind of easy to show here. I could just um, make this bigger. The angle stays the same size. So all of those angles are staying the same size, um, but the triangles are two different sizes, so not congruent. Number five, select all true statements based on this diagram. So segment EB, this segment is congruent to segment AD. That is not true. Segment DC is congruent to segment AB. We see that it's got these arrows on it, but arrows don't mean congruent, they mean parallel. Segment DA is congruent to segment BC, and we see the tick marks confirming that, so this is true. Angle um, CBE, so CBE is this one, congruent to angle ABE, so are these two angles congruent, and that is false. Angle CEB, so CEB is this one. So angle CEB congruent to angle DEA, this one, and that is true. These are vertical angles. Line DA is parallel to CB, so these purple ones here. So this is parallel to this, that is false. And then DC is parallel to AB, and we know that's true because we saw those arrows on it. Number six, Diego states that WY is the bisector of this um, angle XYZ and also XWZ. Is he correct? Explain your reasoning. And so we know that yes, he is correct. because WY splits the kite into two congruent triangles. So the corresponding angles will be congruent. And we know that those little angles on either side of, um, on either side of the diagonal here, so this one and this one are congruent, this one and this one are congruent. And if you wanted to kind of write that out, but you don't want to keep writing all of these angles, you could put little numbers in here. So you could do one, two, three, four, just to maybe make your um, typing easier, your writing easier. Uh, so congruent triangles, so the corresponding angles will be congruent, um, meaning angle one is equal to angle two, and angle three is equal to angle Four. So the um, larger angle W and Y are both split into um, two congruent angles, which is the definition of bisect. So something along that line it doesn't have to be exactly that, but that these two triangles will be congruent um, by side, 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 since they share this side in here, so then these two angles are going to be congruent because they're corresponding, which then is the definition of a bisector. Number seven says sketch unique triangles that can be made with the angle measures of 80, 20, and a side length of five. How do you know you've sketched all the possibilities? So when we see two angles, remember we can find the third one because we know the total of all three is 180. So we can subtract off 80 and 20 from 180 to get that the third angle is 80. So we now know that this triangle has two 80 degree angles, meaning it's isosceles. So the only two ways for this to work would be that, so we've got 80, 80, and then 20, and then this could be five, or another one that we could have would be um, if, these if these ones were five and obviously this is not drawn to scale 
Um, but if the legs were five, and then you, you would have a different measurement here. So um, we know these are the only two possibilities because it's an isosceles triangle. So since the angles are 80, 80, and 20, we know this is an isosceles triangle. So either the base is five in that first picture or the two legs are five. So those are the only two possibilities there.